Welcome back to part two. stories as we proceed with today's uh, madness. Interesting fact, picking up with some of the things we were talking about, or I was talking about, uh, I say we because I I aspire to have a co-host someday. Awkward interjection. I I, I do it once an episode or every other episode, uh, or maybe every episode, but if you are local... Or not, and either you're you're local and willing to come out here, or you're non-local and you've got badass enough internet so we can collaborate vis-a-vis some kind of internet thingy. Uh, looking for a co-host and or segment uh, guests to do stories, etc., etc. There's no money. There's just fun. Hopefully there'll be money in the future. Now, picking up where we left off, let's do let, let's connect some dots. Trump tweets. Threateningly, and there's no denying that, it was a threatening thing to say. Comey better hope there aren't any tapes. Now, there's a couple of ways you a person could analyze that and read it. Either he made tapes himself, Donald Trump, and he was trying to be cutesy and weird and coy because he didn't really want to reveal them, but he wanted to convey the threat of Be careful how you choose your words, Mr. Comey, because I've got a recording. Another version of that is that Trump may have been aware of surveillance uh, that he'd authorized by, you know, that someone else was making tapes, not himself. I'm inclined to think that that is the case given the, the tweet, the most recent tweet regarding uh, it was a rambly, weird tweet, and 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 ultimately, like I was saying before, I think that he's trying to say he's trying to leave room. Whether or not it's true, that's another question. But he's trying to leave room in the ambiguity of his statements for his followers, for his most obsessive Trumptopians, to continue to believe that there might be tapes, not because he himself or his vice president or his chief of staff made tapes in their own forward-thinking thoughtfulness of self-protection, but because he's being spied on, right? He's got that whole narrative of, uh, I was uh, bugged. Trump Tower was bugged. Here's a a really salient fun fact that maybe not a lot of uh, uh, citizens out there may not be aware of it. Because there is an interesting and sort of murky history with presidents recording conversations they have with staff, with ambassadors, with other uh, politicians, etc., uh, there's a Presidential Records Act, which applies to recordings and uh, other documentation, that requires that after a cooling-off period, all such documents must be you know, archived and uh, presented to the public with some, you know, sensitivity redaction, et cetera, et cetera. So if there really are tapes, which I would posit, I would suggest Trump himself legally, technically, did not push record on a machine for and does not personally have direct possession of any residual file or physical tape, which is unlikely, right? It's probably digital. Um, so that he himself can maintain the like impunity of like, well, subpoena me. I'm not going to give you anything because there's nothing for me to give you. While it wouldn't be impossible to think, to fathom, uh, that they actually did make recordings For no other reason other than the gear is probably right there. Uh, Which reminds me of a bit, two things actually, from this NPR.org article. It's titled, The The Shadowy History of Secret White House Tapes. And it's got two bits. 
that I really appreciate. Oh, I want to give credit where credit's due. It's uh, byline, uh, published, penned by Domenico Montanaro. Apologies if I butchered your name. And like I said, NPR is one of the very short, on a very short list of news agencies that I think generally doesn't have an anti-Trump agenda. It's definitely openly critical of Trump, though, because it has like a pro-democratic, pro-progressive, pro, you know, like, let's take action to solve problems kind of agenda. But at any rate, you can disagree with them as a source if you want. But there was a really interesting bit about, oh, where's the first one? Ah, and I quote, Presidential recordings are all subject to eventual release and archiving under the President Rec- Presidential Records Act, meaning if there are Trump recordings of Comey, eventually Americans will likely hear them. What's more, if the tapes become the subject of a congressional subpoena, they would have to be turned over. Have to be turned over. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled in a unanimous decision in 1974 that the president has to release recordings unless they are military or diplomatic secrets. Ah, interesting caveat, right? Interesting caveat. Uh, and I don't know if that segment was for too long for me to read by technical like protection things. But I, I find that fascinating because I, I, if nothing else... Trump is wily and he likes to be ambiguous enough in order to redirect whatever misdirection game he's playing. He's always done that. Anyone who's uh, been familiar with his shenanigans in New York and in, in business dealings could see the pattern. Referencing back to something, uh, you know, that news that was reported on a couple outlets about that transcript from a previous uh, testimony that he had to give under under oath, under perjury of, of uh, under, you know, uh, uh, whatever of perjury, threat of perjury. He played this game before with someone else. He laid that same sort of, I'm going to let you think there might be tapes, there are tapes, you won't know for sure, I'll never confirm it. Even when I, even, even when I, when he confirms that he actually indeed does not have any tapes, he plays a reverse engineer, what I maybe said, maybe didn't say it, I don't remember. You know, he, he leaves himself wiggle room for ambiguity. So that his lies can as egregious as they might be, get caught up in all the, all the different directions of the misdirection sort of nature of the way he makes his statements. So these two big headlines, I think they kind of go hand in hand. Uh, the tapes, the denial of the tapes, the, you know, but the lingering suggestion that some other actor, some other... Uh, you know, person in the White House, some other person in the government somewhere might have made tapes so that he can keep, he, he wants to leave that door open to come back and say, aha, the deep state was been spying on me even in the Oval Office. Now, if that were true, then we would know what was said between that meeting uh, of the Russians and the president that happened in the White House. I'm not a betting man, but if I were, I'd be willing to say that either there are tapes and he was sat and the team was savvy enough to set it up in such a way that he could deny tapes if it became inconvenient to use them anymore. And then they wouldn't be able to find them in theory in hopes that they would be, it's, you know, oh, duh, that we really, you know, we don't, we don't want them exposed. We can be, you know, plausible deniability. And we're all, we're all familiar with that. It's been in the movies since, God, before I was born. Pl- we need plausible deniability, Mr. President. 
right? Uh, and the other story about the, you know, like, I'm going to throw sticks and stones about Robert Mueller and that investigation. If this isn't, if th- he also very assuredly said uh, on camera, there's no obstruction, there's no collusion. He's trying to, in the court of public opinion, characterize the investigation so severely, excuse me, um, that his fans and the rest of us who are just sick and tired of the fucking merry-go-round will just stop caring about the investigation. Now, here's an, a, a, an interesting place where I think he might be playing the same sort of misdirection tactic. I genuinely think, I could be wrong, I think that there was, in fact, very little to almost zero collusion with the hackers on the hacking. Okay? Now, the meetings happened. Kushner, Kislyak, that other guy, Sergey, Sergey, whatever his name was, or was that Kislyak? Um, you know, Mike Flynn, they, the Russians met with the Trump team. Fuck, Trump had them in the White House post, you know, right after, God, it was the most awkward thing. I know, talked about it, uh, I think, right when it happened. Um, the day before, there was some, you know, decisive shit that went down and some big, bold statements about, you know, how uh, the investigations of witch hunt or the, everything's fake news. And then the next day, he's got three prominent Russian... Mm, let's be kind and polite and not call them KGB agents. But three Russian diplomats and political agents, you know, political agents, political actors in the White House. Uh, So, duh. And, you know, he might be Hillary Clinton's cousin. You know what's not being talked about in the news again? And this is sort of like the kind of awkward, I'm a broken record bit about uh, my shows. No one's talking about Panama Papers. Not yet. I won't be surprised. I'm going to call it now. Friends and fans and followers. If it comes out later on, when we, because we're not going to get, like there's going to be a report, a commission, like a, you know, a special committee report. And there's going to be a whole discourse, a whole argument about whether or not it's as fake or not more fake than the 9-11 Special Commission report <laughs> or if it's real and valid, right? We, as a, as a nation, are going to have that crisis. But hopefully, amidst the crazy, there's because there will be some attempt to, when, when they write the report, to guide the conclusions towards some normative pro-statist pro-patriotic, pro-war, pro-America's the best sort of bottom line. But we might get some truth out of it too. And we maybe, maybe might find out that Trump and his associates were guilty of other things besides stuff having to do with the hacking. The whole hacking issue is really confused and clouded because there's multiple hacking, uh, what would you call them? Uh, 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 multiple hacking assaults or initiatives that went down at the same time. There's hackings that are just now surfacing uh, that was also in the news in the last 48 hours uh, from different states. Some of which, according to one report, uh, I didn't write down the sourcing, forgive me. Uh, but it'll come back. It'll come around the merry-go-round of news again, I'm sure, in the next three weeks. Uh, but some saying that maybe, just maybe, in this state, in this county, these voter rolls actually got futzed with digitally, which is something that we, you know, hadn't thought was possible, had happened yet. I don't think that Trump was, was stupid enough or had access to information valuable enough to collude on that hacking. Does Trump look like he knows how to use hacking stuff 
Does Trump strike you as a hacker? No. Does Trump appear to have a wealth of knowledge of the, um, the American political voting process? No. Right? I mean, he talked a lot of fluff, but fluffer's fluff, yo. Uh, and that's, that's, that's one of his things. <clears throat> so I don't, I, I really don't think, I think that that's a red herring connection there. Investigating whether or not there was collusion is going to render confusing results because there was meetings, they talked about stuff, they just didn't talk about hacking. I'm pretty sure. They didn't talk about voter registration rolls in Wisconsin. I'm pretty sure. I don't know for a fact. Sorry, Bill Maher. Um, I'm trying to make my own version of that that isn't too much of a bite on your coinage. Uh, I don't know if just inverting the statements counts. Does it, audience? Does it count? But let's, let's be honest, folks. Politics is corrupt, right? Like, we all know that. Even the statists, the people still really beating their chests about being Republicans or Democrats, they all are cognizant of that. The Republicans are really aware of of corruption, especially at the grassroots level, maybe not so much at the Fox and Friends news broadcast level, but at the grassroots level, Republicans voted for Trump because of their distaste, their dislike, their disapproval for the amount of corruption in government. Now, why is there corruption in government, folks? I hate to be the one that breaks the news to you, breaking your news break. News, breaking news. Breaky, breaky, break, break, news. But um, (laughs) corruption happens in politics because corruption, having to do with profiteering at the expense of other people, is, is attracted to power. Politics is a power game. It's a power system. It's about having the power to do, quote-unquote, what is right for those who supported you and voted for you into office, voted you into office, right? Power and corruption attract each other. If you are corrupt and you have means, you know, corruption sort of requires... it's. I haven't met very many horrifically corrupt and extremely poor people, uh, but uh, but you know I have found poor people. I've met poor people willing to break the law, which is totally different. Well, arguably, but let's get back to the presidential level of crazy, right? Of of crazy activities here. Let Let me finish painting my equation. Power attracts corruption. Politics generates power. That means that politics, as a game, as a system, as a, as a job to aspire to, attracts people with an affinity for corruption and power. And Donald J. Trump is no different. Donald J. Trump is not immune to that. As I'm trying to uh, paint the picture before, and I continue to... Um, Donald Trump is is not just not impervious to that equation, in my opinion, and in the opinion of others, his whole mindset is rendered out by that equation. That equation has existed for a long time, a lot longer than Donald Trump has been alive. So as a human individual in his personal life context, he inherited a whole, you know, lifetime of conditioning in favor that drew him, compelled him, uh, hooked him and sucked him in to be part of that equation. Uh, any pr- You need proof of that. And there's still a lot of hardcore fans, a lot of hardcore Trump-topians, Trump voters. I need another term because we're all Trump-topians. But I need like a, 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 another term that not, not as disrespectful as Trump tards because I refuse to inculcate myself into that I accidentally will occasionally use 
the phrase that's retarded because it was just super duper stupid common back in my day and it's kind of lodged in there deep but I respect that that is offensive to people who have mental retardation and I I might have mental retardation we all there you know, if autism is a spectrum and so is genetics and so is stupidity and so are positive things about human people Maybe we are all on one unified spectrum and we all have a little bit of all the good things and a little bit of all the dumb, bad things. Um, But I digress. If you need any more further proof of his corruption, I think the big ones that have stood out since his inauguration day, right, just like they just blatantly on their face without any further investigation beyond the fact that these things are true is that for the first time in history, three Russian, uh, you know, a president of the United States welcomed and leaked, you know, that which he is complaining about now against Mr. Comey, leaked super sensitive information to the Russians in the White House, in the Oval Office. Okay, one. And that happened really right away early on. Two, uh, the $100 billion arms, weapons, war machine death deal that our dear beloved president of Trumptopia made on his first executive trip overseas. There was a lot of uh, talk about his speeches, a lot of talk about, uh, you know, how he was visiting all the three major religions in the world, a lot of lip service to him. This is his big effort to help create peace in the world. A lot of talk about how he was going to put his foot down and be strict with NATO and the United Nations, etc., etc., etc. The $100 billion, $100 billion weapons manufacturing deal was framed as a jobs creator. I don't know about you, but I would never want to take a job where every day the product I assemble and earn my living from, you know, manufacturing is going to go and kill someone on purpose by design. All right. And I don't think that's what government is about. And I really genuinely am on the side, I'm on the camp, I'm on the team of people that are convinced that war cannot be used as a tool to end war. That a gun cannot be used to end the systemic problem of inappropriate gun violence. I don't think, I think that uh, that a lie we are indoctrinated with is the, the following notion that you got to fight fire with fire. And I've already walked through the explanation of why I know that how that sort of kind of makes sense from a firefighting position of you got to burn off the fuel before the, the wildfire gets there. But that's not really a fight between fire and a fire, is it? Because you you got to burn it off and put it out before the fire reaches you. You know it's controlled and then it's put out. That's how it helps. And the fact that it helps direct the fire's energy in terms of uh, you know how quickly it can spread through direct contact with something. Uh, the third okay. Di- uh, returning back to my three bullet points of like God, how obvious is this? The third thing is Trump care. How many promises has he broken on Trump care? We can add a fourth thing real quick, the wall between Mexico and the United States. I loved his little solar panel comments and how he's really back, really intelli- cleverly black, backslid, backslided. He has made a backwards, he stepped back out of his promise that Mexico was going to pay for the wall. Now it's going to somehow magically pay for itself using solar power, even though 
we've got to bring coal miners' jobs back, and we can't stop fracking. But never mind that. When that was not on my top three. My top three list of things that just like, really? That isn't enough evidence for you? These are true things. These are facts. You don't need to dig any deeper. You don't see that this guy's just a fucking puppet doing this job for the war profiteering military industrial complex. Uh, you know, like elite that control our lives and profiteer on our birth, our illnesses, our, our going to school, or everything. Yeah. Uh, Another one to put just outside of the number three list is the appointees that he's pointed. But that one takes too long to explain and has already been hashed out. But that just seems really obvious. He's not draining the swamp. And he's not creating jobs in Washington. He's not creating Washington jobs either, right? A true draining of the swamp would have been a tactical plan to get rid of the bad actors, the bad eggs in staff positions, and to replace them with good eggs. And he did not do that. He just fired way too many people and hired way too few people, all of them with almost painfully obvious corporate profiteering, destroy the institution you disappointed me to lead sort of motivations. As egregious as that was, it's not on my top three list. My top three, my final one is, is Trump care. Okay? Nobody loves the Bible more than I do. He said over and over again during the campaign. Couldn't pick a favorite passage. Drop of a hat. My three favorite passages. Boom, boom, boom. Thy body is an eye. If thine eye be singular, thy body be made of light. Number one favorite personal Bible passage. Number two, that which you do unto the least of your brothers, you are directly doing to me. Uh, and, and passage number three, uh, and I can't remember the exact phrasing, but if you're wealthy, take all of your money and give it to your the poor. Then and only then will you understand the true bounty and abundance of the kingdom of God here on earth. Okay. And then my three favorite examples through action by Christos, because his name wasn't Jesus Christ, by the way, you guys. That's an English bastardization of ancient Sumerian. And his name wasn't his name wasn't those words. What those words were in ancient Sumerian, ya, ya, uh, Yahshua or Yehu Christos, those weren't that wasn't his name either. His name was probably Billy Bob Bill Johnson. Right? It doesn't matter what his name name was. Those were labels attributed to him. Uh, just like Buddha wasn't Buddha's name, we thankfully, even though it was 500 years before Christ, have a clear, accurate, a much more accurate... Uh, ooh, I'm getting an interesting, crazy phone call. Should I take it? I'm in the middle of a show. What if it's a bill collector? What if it's a robocall? What if it's a friend trying to ask me an inappropriate question? Let's find out. Hello? This is he who's asking. Uh, I'm not well, thanks for asking, though. No. not have answered that totally hey uh that was a horribly embarrassing personal call i have some outstanding bad credit i gotta take care of and that was someone getting on my case about it but i'm in the middle of the show uh another favorite which reminds me of a humbling bible quote neither borrower nor lender be why is that to go on that tangent uh because money is an unnatural tool that we don't need, which leads us down the ego path of profiteering. And uh, apparently benign services such as uh, banking and credit um, are cleverly disguised ego trap tools in order to get you to give in to your ego-driven desire to have more, which is an unsatisfiable desire. 
uh, and a pit trap that I fell into. I, you know, had a credit card when I was young, and I put too much shit on it that I couldn't afford to pay, and it's been floating around, and I paid some of it off, and, and it's been bought and sold and rebought and resold, uh, and I went through a very hard time. I'm exposing a lot of personal information here. Um, it's not a lot of money. It's not horrible. I will be able to pay it off someday, but today is not the day. Um, and dang it, I confirmed to that guy that who I was, which is a bummer. I shouldn't have done that. Um, that was personally embarrassing and humiliating, but I will let it stand as part of the record because it is part of the show. Uh, and I, it happened live, and I made a choice. Boom. But let's get back to Bible quotes and how they relate to the number to the this Trump care thing and why I think it's the most egregious, um, evidentiary, like just fact of the matter thing. Uh, never mind that it's being negotiated in secret, right? Whoop de doo. Never mind that uh, even the people who are part of the secret negotiations can't seem to answer a straight question for anyone anywhere in the media uh, about what's going to be in it. Or at least they appear not to be able to do that, right? What we have found out from legitimate reporting from the you know from all sides of the of the media spectrum is something that just uh, as as humiliating as that phone call that just happened in real time about my personal life and my the fact that I'm in a you know stupid like I have some you know tax troubles I got to work out not tax troubles I'm great with the IRS. Uh, they they almost always owe me money, and I haven't. I literally here's another embarrassing factoid about my life. I just uh, survived a two year gap of zero work, where I was you know completely unemployed. And for, before you judge me, I did not take unemployment. I hustled, busted my ass, and relied on a lot of help from family and friends, and you know burnt through what little bit of what you might call savings I might have had, and I went back to work. Um, and here I am now. And so I owe some corporation that has bought and rebought and resold and, uh, a credit package from like 15 years ago, probably about a thousand dollars. Whoop de doo. Um, does that make me a bad person? No. Uh, but does it? Here's where we're going with the point. So one of the undeniable things about the health care bill that Trump is, if it passes, Trump is more than likely going to sign into office despite that he, the fact that he flip-flopped on it from saying, hey, you guys got to get this done, you guys got to get this done. It's kind of mean and we need a, a better bill with a little more kindness in it. Uh, which is interesting, weird, and curious you know, midnight tweet of his. Uh, Estimates in reporting indicate that the bill, if it becomes law, if it goes through the whole process and and the president puts it into law and it takes effect, it will render, in the long run, buried deep in all the crazy Michigas and all the legalese and all the language about uh, you know the new regulations or the lack of regulations controlling the insurance industry. It will render an eight billion dollar cut in healthcare funding to Americans with disabilities, with pre-existing conditions, with life-threatening terminal diseases, um, and uh, you know other needs that previous generations of Americans thought were worthy of being. You know, helped out that they were worthy of, be, of being given financial help. <coughs> I don't know about you, but that's mind blowing in and of itself. I think that's separate. I could be wrong about the way I'm describing it. I think that's separate from the uh, the fact that. The, the way that the law is going to change the market, that an estimated 20 million or so or 23 million people are going to lose coverage. 
uh, and it's a trifecta of just offensive here. The whole thing seems to culminate in a six billion dollar tax cut for the richest of the richest of the rich, and a, a, and a you know a wee bit of a of a lip service throwaway. Here's a here's a tiny stupid fractional percentage, you know, a couple hundred dollars tax cut for the rest of us. But a six billion dollar tax cut for the wealthy, and I've been paying attention to economics and politics for over 30 years. And let me tell you, trickle down the rich people should be given tax breaks because they're the job creators. Bullshit is bullshit, and it's a lie. If you give wealthy people money in that under that formula, they will spend it on themselves and on their luxury lifestyles, and the people that will make money from them are typically... Uh, high-end retailers and merchants that sell crazy expensive shit that the rest of us don't work at. And, you know, maybe a little bit of corporate investing and may, that you know might render some fractional percentage of job creation. But, uh... In the past, when the right extreme political uh, movement in America has push tax cuts that benefit primarily the wealthy under the banner of that will empower them to have leverage to create new jobs for the rest of us it has fallen flat on its face and pretty much just deepened the recession and deepened the pain that the rest of us feel economically and made things worse and not created like uh, you know, a world-changing or world-saving amount of new, innovative jobs. Now I want to take it to yet another level because that's three things that this Republican government, because it's now currently all Republican across the board, right? They are in control. I think it's comical. When anybody on the on the Republican side of the ideological spectrum today is calling the Democrats obstructionists, a uh, that you got some you got some some chutzpah there, buddy. Uh, after the eight years of overt self-identified, you declared yourselves obstructionists under Obama. Mind you, that's just always part of their game. They're always going to do that. They're always going to call each other the same names that they called each other before and take turns looking like the worst of the bad guys. It's part of the game. But here's where it gets really offensive and egregious, okay? Beyond all the layers of offensive and egregious we just discussed. While the word healthcare does not appear in the New Testament, Jesus leaves an impossible to deny leading by example sort of you know thing uh, testimonial as to what his opinion is on healthcare back then there weren't there weren't a lot of doctors or hospitals right but uh, and I'm going to start off with a story that doesn't relate directly to healing but he kicks the bankers the money lenders that let you be go into debt, create debt for you out of the temple. The, the temple was the, uh, in that era and in, in, you know in those in that kind of society was a place of healing. And in another uh, story, he heals people, and, and you know on more than one occasion he heals people for free, completely for free. And he heals people using what, you know, uh, haters or people dismissing all of this might call magic. But arguably, there's a pretty intelligent, well-thought-out theory out there that what Jesus was experiencing was actually, you know, early-onset ascension to a next-level sort of energy-empowered mode of operation. And that his healing... 
appeared to be magical and his miracles appeared to be miraculous because he was utilizing kundalini energy and you know uh you know uh, uh, metatron's cube sort of sacred geometric um energy frequency tools that we even back then were you know being deprived of our availability to uh, access those things and to learn about those things um you know because the conspiracy to keep us engaged in ego spiral pit trap has been around for long before christ that's sort of the cosmic game we have all been playing always uh whether you believe in aliens or not the universe that we exist in is self-contained and infinite that means there's other people elsewhere here uh and guess what they're all living the same kind of test the test is simple the way we live it out in our history can be mind-bogglingly complex but uh more on that in some of uh, in my other segments I want to close up uh, some of the news, news, opinion stuff. Um, so it's no wonder, given the fact that this is going on with healthcare, I mean, like, what would Jesus do? This is offensive. This should be, if you're a Christian, if you self-identify as Christian, if you used to be a Christian, if you at any point have any leniency towards the notion that the United States of America is a Christian nation, then all of that should be like a quadruple whammy of offensive, what they're doing with healthcare. Because what would Jesus do? Jesus would fucking heal you with his kundalini powers, motherfucker. And he wouldn't charge you a goddamn penny. And if he showed up today, I can tell you this right now. This is beyond opinion. I think this is, a, 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 I hate to use this word, I use it, uh, this phrase, I use it very selectively, but this is an article of faith for me. If Christos himself, if Jesus Christ, the man and body and spirit energy avatar himself, showed up right now, he would kick out the financiers that finance hospitals from everywhere and say, heal them with your kundalini energy, motherfuckers. The fuck haven't you all been developing a massive worldwide culture of healing people with your innate natural organic god-given gifts of healing question mark question mark question mark and that's where i'm going to wrap things up today oh i wanted to give a shout out and love to all the protesters that were in the news uh specifically the ones that were themselves suffering with uh physical disabilities and pre-existing conditions um i i don't remember the exact number but several people in wheelchairs were bravely protesting and got arrested uh, in the last 48 hours. Uh, and those people, their voices deserve to be heard. We are supposed to be healing ourselves and each other for free. I'm not even Christian, yo. And I'm not arguing for becoming Christian. I do, as an intellectual, recognize the existence of the enlightened one that we ignorantly call Jesus Christ, because that's not his name. Uh, and it, like I just said, He's turning over, I've said it before, he's rolling over in his grave, if he were sitting in it. He's over in the other dimension going, tisk, 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 y'all doing it wrong. All right, that's been the show for today. Thank you for joining me. If you appreciate what I do, tell your friends. Post on social media. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. You're offended, let me know, but don't bring rage hate. I, I, I'm not here to incite arguments. If you're offended, explain to me as calmly and as patiently as you can how I offended you and why. And I will try to appease your anger. Until next time, this has been the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. I send you peace, love, and grooviness, self questioning, and much beautiful light. <laughs>